Welcome to the Good Shepherd and the Child podcast, where we explore the spirituality of the Christian child through the method of the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. I am your host, Carrie Mecki Lozano. Today, I have Sister Mary Michael Fox on the podcast to speak about her brand new book, Following God's Pedagogy. This is a really interesting book. We have a lot of amazing books in our world of Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, and this one is different. This one is really great. She talks about how in the 2020 Directory for Catechesis, which is a document that talks about how the church would like us to go about doing all forms of catechesis, Sister Mary Michael talks about how the church calls for a renewal of catechesis that focuses on bringing people into a deeper relationship with God and with Jesus Christ. And in this book, she talks about how in the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, for over 50 years, we have been doing what this 2020 directory for catechesis is asking of us. And it, she goes through a lot of history and she goes through a lot of church documents. And it's really beautiful. She did a great job with this book. And so we have Sister Mary Michael on the podcast to talk more about her book, how she came about bringing it to us, and the beauty that she found along the way. I hope you enjoy. Well, welcome to the podcast, Sister Mary Michael. I'm so happy to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Pleased to be here. Honored. (laughs) Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. Who are you, Sister Mary Michael? (laughs) Um, Well, I'm a Nashville Dominican sister and uh, or Dominican sister of St. Cecilia in Nashville. And I've been a sister for over 30 years. Um. I've taught children from three to 93. I can actually say that. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> um, come from a big family in Baltimore, Maryland. And right now I'm living at our retreat house, um, managing 100 acres of, of uh, land and uh, writing books on the side. <laughs> That's awesome. And how did you get involved in Catechesis of the Good Shepherd? Oh, well, you know, hmm. That was, that was a divine appointment, no doubt about it, divine appointment. Um, I think I bumped into it in 1998, now that I'm thinking back, uh, when I was a principal at St. Gertrude School in Madeira, Ohio, and there was a woman there who was doing a modification of CGS, but it didn't, it didn't have a name to it. It just had some of that, that wonder and that um, scripture love. But I actually first met it when I was asked to be the director of our Office of Catechetics at our college. And that meant from the office, we were conducting trainings, uh, formation courses through the college. And I showed up just, you know, to be present, um, making sure, you know, what is this work? And, and uh, yeah, just kind of helping to support. Mm -hmm. And that's, and oh gosh, from the first, from the first session, the first lesson, I, I was overwhelmed, overwhelmed by it. I was in the middle of my dissertation. Actually, I just started. I shouldn't say I was in the middle uh, formally. And I had, um, I was researching an entirely different question uh, about about catechesis and and what the church has asked for in catechesis, reading all the documents, um, having just finished up my postgraduate specialization in catechetics from Franciscan University of (laughs) Studio. So formal. <laughs> that is so formal. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, and reading all these catechetical documents, all these catechetical documents. And, and so I started a, a doctoral research question in um, 2009, 2009, just looking for, you know, wh- what, what is the church really looking for in catechetics? And, um, and, and what went wrong in catechetics? I think that was my first, my first thing. You know, how did it happen that we've gotten to this, what I call polemic? You know, where, where people right. are people are saying things like, well, it's important that they know God and know their faith. And then others were saying, well, it's important that they love God and love their faith. And, I, and of course, as Dominican, I'm thinking, how can the head and the heart be separated? This is right. So um, so I was really looking into that question, Carrie, you know, what how did this get separated in catechetics and um, and how do we pull that back together? So I spent a whole year researching that. Uh, from one of the um, the synod, 1977 synod, that really looked at catechesis in our time, 
and uh, came across a passage in that document that really blew me away where the Holy Father, he said, um, now let me see if I can quote this from memory. This is the sign of my, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's paragraph 22 and I'm not looking, so I may paraphrase it, but he, but he said, it's useless to play off orthodoxy from orthopraxis. Catechesis is separately both. Mm-hmm. So I had to go look up, you know, well, I know what orthodoxy was, but what was orthopraxis? And so what he was saying is it's it's useless to put and pit doctrine against life, mm-hmm. like living the faith. And uh, and I got, wow, why would anybody do that? And I write about this in, in the book in the introduction where this is really coming from. Well, lo and behold, when I sit down at the Catechese Good Shepherd formation, mm-hmm. after spending a whole year of looking at the debates and looking at the the polemics and the the camps that I'll call them, uh, you know, mm-hmm. <clears throat> and I looked at it and I thought, oh my gosh, here it is, <laughs> here it is. I'm I'm looking at a way to 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 hand on the faith to teach children who Jesus is and what he said, what the church teaches <clears throat> in a way that's touching their heart. Right. And so I, 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 I was just blown away. And I remember looking around the room thinking, is anybody else like <laughs> seeing what I'm seeing? Well, they were, they were, but they weren't seeing it through the eyes of the catechetical documents. That's what I, that's what I found out. Um, is that many of my CGS uh, friends were, you know, they loved the work and they didn't need any convincing that it was beautiful. Right. <laughs> What they were saying to me was, uh, we need help with the church language. And I said, mm-hmm. well, I got the church language. <laughs> and you've got the work. Let's let's get together. So I went to my director and I said, I need to change my, my research question. Now, you don't usually do that when you're starting a research, qu- <laughs> but I had to. And I said to him, I said, for a whole year, I've been looking at what happened in catechetics um, that separated the head and the heart doctrine and life and knowledge and experience. But I'm finding an approach that I think brings it all together. So rather than spend a whole lot of time just kind of picking out what went wrong, why don't I lift up what works? Why don't I lift up what works and and show people why this works in context of what went wrong, if that makes Mm -hmm. sense. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's my big doctoral question, um, how to reconcile religious knowledge and religious experience in light of um, God's pedagogy, the way he did it. So anyway, it's a big, long, it's a big, long answer. Sorry. That's yes. okay. It's a good answer. <laughs> and it gave us this book, this absolutely amazing book. I was reading this book and I'm sitting here going, oh my gosh, Aww. this is the answer. It is. It is such a great <sighs> Thank book. Thank you. And I, it's one of those books that you're like, um, I need to give this oh, copies of you. this book to very specific people so that they can see what I've been trying to tell them <laughs> for a long time. You do such a beautiful job in that church language of explaining the beauty of what we do in Catechesis of the Good Shepherd and how it meets what the church is truly asking of us in catechetics. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And you can thank Claudia Peterson. Uh, for that book. <laughs> Thank you, Claudia. <laughs> she, um, many of the CGS people were aware of my research because I was asking them because um, I don't have an atrium. And so I'm kind of an outsider trying to get inside your world. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to be so faithful. So mm-hmm. I just kept interviewing different people um, in, in the organization. And Claudia came up to me after I met her 2014. And she said, Where's that dissertation? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so uh, she, she kept probing about we need we need it, sister. We need the work. And I said, we I do. know. I, I need to write a book. I, I just can't bring that dissertation out. It's just you know, and I'm glad I didn't because my thoughts have even matured since mm. the dissertation. So I'm so glad I didn't get that out there. But she was the one who said, we need a book. What do you do? What do you need? What do you need? And I'll do whatever you need. And with that, <laughs> oh, oh my gosh, what a joy, what a gift in your organization, in our organization, the CGS. Mm-hmm. And so that's why I wrote the book, so that um, 
all of that work that we all did, because there's many people in the CGS who contributed to my research, that that work could be um, in, a, in a, a readable text that you could then take to your pastor, your bishop, your mm -hmm. DRE, and even your fellow catechists, that they can appreciate the, the, oh my gosh, the profound gift that this approach is. Mm -hmm. It's a profound gift. I, I, I think it's anointed. I think it's anointed, really. And so that was, that was my, my research, was to, was to look at it, how it stands up to what the church is asking in catechetics, some people would say, well, well, we don't need it to stand up, but, but actually we do. Uh, Catechesis of the Good Shepherd is an authentic catechetical approach. That was what Sophia and Gianna wanted. Um, in fact, in fact, they were the ones who, after the church did her synod in 1977, there was a question, um, or a statement rather, Catechesis Tridende number five, and it said catechesis, the aim of it is to put others in touch, in intimacy with, with Christ. Mm -hmm. And Sophia and Gianna said, right, how do we do that? How do we do that? And that's what I think kept them on this continued journey, even though they started in 1954. Sophia was very involved in the, um, in the preparatory work for that synod with her local diocese. Mm -hmm. So she had her pulse and her and her head and her fingers all in what was happening in catechetics in the '60s and '70s, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, I like to say she had she and Sophia had one hand on the church and one hand on the child, with the Holy Spirit just moving right. them. Right. That's what I, that's what I see in the work, and um, it's just it's brilliant. It's brilliant, and I just get so excited. As you can tell, I haven't took it, taken a breath. I'm so excited. About the <laughs> well, it's probably also a good thing that you didn't publish the book back when you were first talking about it, because then you also are able to include the 2020 directory for catechesis in this work as well. And how, well, tell us about that and tell us how it parallels with CGS. Well, that also answers why the book was so late. So I was actually already working on the book with Claudia and when the 2020 directory came out mm -hmm. and my editor said, okay, sister, now you realize you have to um, bring everything up to date according to the directory. Right. Your book so is I already was... outdated and it's not even published. <laughs> right. At first I was just, oh, you can't, I can't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> Writing is already very hard for me. And anyway. But when I sat down and I read cover to cover the new directory, mm -hmm. um, and I, I thought, oh, my gosh, they had CGS people on the committee. Yeah. It was, it was, <laughs> so I kept asking. My difference That's what I it said, sounded like, right? Said, it sounded Mary, like they said, wrote Mary, it. Mary, were you on the committee? Mary Maroney. I said, Mary, were you on the committee? No. I said, who <laughs> were the CGS people? There, this had to have CGS people on it. And then I stepped back and realized, no, no, it didn't. Because it's the same Holy Spirit. Hmm. The same Holy Spirit that guided Sophia and Gianna is the same Holy Spirit who, who has been working in the heart and mind of the church. My joy was being able to, to say things like, 50 years before this directory, <laughs> <laughs> these two unassuming women had this insight. So it, <clears throat> anyway, I was trying not to be too cheeky, but every once in a while... Uh, I, I did give testimony to their prophetic work, mm -hmm. their prophetic work. And um, that's how you know a, pr a prophet is a true prophet, is when it comes to light in the future to be true. Mm -hmm. And so here were these women in 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s, just, just quietly working, trying to answer that question. How do we introduce these children to Jesus? How do we mm -hmm. help them fall in love? How do we form, help form their hearts and their minds to the gospel? And, um, and then the church in, 19, in 2020 said, there is, there, yeah, here's the way. And it all matches up so beautifully. So, How great, though, that the church, the international church, has come up with this document that says, okay, guys, this is the type of catechetics that we want to offer everybody yes. yes and 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 
we as CGS oh. as the Catechese of Good Shepherd can say, okay, we we can do that. <laughs> you know, like you don't need to find the answer. We we at least have one answer for you. You know, I think there's other ways yes. to apply it, but we can provide for you what you are looking for. What what a gift that is to the church that we've already have so many decades of experience of yes. living into what they are asking of us now in catechetics. Yes, yes. And yes, no, I think that's that's part of what I also wrote in the book was to lift up some principles. And I use the word pedagogy, which is a, it's a school word. Um, yeah. And again, I had to really explain that to my CGS friends, you know, why I'm using so much um education terms like curriculum, pedagogy, teaching. Um, and it's because the church said that catechesis is an education in the faith. And what I tried to do for, for, for everyone, I, I, I think, was to really look at that word, what does it mean to be educated? And uh, we, we have inherited kind of a, a distorted view of education and pedagogy. Mm-hmm. And so trying to recover that for, for all catechists, um, Joe Propocki, who uh, endorsed the book, I was so grateful. He said, oh, for years I've been saying catechetics should be more like mass and less like class. And, mm-hmm. and, he's, and he's right on that, you know. But, but a class, a good classroom teacher, a good classroom teacher, understands in the Montessori and St. Thomas understanding of knowledge they understand how to lead a child to knowledge, right? H- how to guide them. That's what a good teacher does. And of course, Sophia knew that. So she's quoting St. Augustine with his whole thing of, of signpost. And, um, you know, she says, we can't be teachers. And, and what she meant by that was, I, I can't do that aha moment in a child's mm. mind, but I certainly and need to be intentional about, about showing that child the signpost. Mm-hmm. And that's what CGS does so beautifully. It, mm-hmm. it, the parables, the liturgical gestures, these are just magnificent signposts, to use a great word that Sophia loved, signs of the mystery. And then letting the child with wonder take that next step. Mm-hmm. Um, because because wonder is the key to knowledge it really is mm-hmm. so it's exciting so so you'll see in the book i'm always trying to carefully not fall into an either or mm-hmm. <laughs> right i'm mm-hmm. not a camper <laughs> it's always a both and it's always a both and the heart uh, is inspired by what the mind actually contemplates mm-hmm. and that's what right. cgs does so perfectly so yes we have something to offer the church by way of just this is what it looks like. It, you know, the church doesn't say there's only one approach, and I'll never say there's only one approach. Right. But but I do say this is the best I see out there right now. <laughs> <laughs> for all for all the different reasons. For all the right. different reasons. But um, it can also just be such a beautiful foundational approach. I mean, um, like we said, we've been working on this work for decades. So yeah. if if we understand the the heart of what we do in Catechesis of the Good Shepherd, it can be applied in so many different ministries and avenues um, yes. outside of the zero to 12 year old. Like, of course, that right. is where our foundations lie because, right. you know, Jesus told us to be like the child. So it's there where we can find him the most. But it is not limited to the zero to 12 year old. No, no. <clears throat> and, and within the, within the work, I, I, again, I think for the CGS catechist to really appreciate the depth of Sophia and Gianna's genius. Mm-hmm. You know, we hear they follow the child, but as I mentioned in the book, that wasn't a um, wild goose chase. Um, they they didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> they just had the humility to to when they offered something to the child, either by way of a particular proclamation or a material. They had the humility to uh, if the child didn't accept it or didn't it didn't hit the spark as they said it to leave that and try another way, you know. But Sophia was a theologian <clears throat> of great. Um, esteem actually in her day, a, a great biblical scholar. 
<clears throat> Scott Hahn one time when I when I told him that I was doing a research on Sophia Cavaletti, he said, she's a brilliant scripture scholar. Well, that's no small thing for Scott Hahn to say. Mm -hmm. So you have the theologian who has studied the fathers of the church, has studied um, what I refer to as the, um, the racialment theology that was happening in the 50s. Uh, she she was following what was happening in the development of an understanding of divine revelation that uh, Cardinal Ratzinger was championing, who then became Benedict the Sixteenth. And then you have this master educator who, again, knows the child, has insight into the child, and they they converge in in what can only be seen as a really divine appointment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I feel like there's so much Holy Spirit in that story of yes. how the history of how the two of them yeah. came in their own past and then how their paths joined. It's You can definitely see the Holy Spirit. And humility and humility. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But I want to encourage the CGS people, you know, <clears throat> you, you really have something right now in this time. This is your time. Um I mean, you've, you all have always known what you're doing in your atrium. You know what you're doing with the children. Um, and that's been gift to you. Uh, you have a chance now to then make that a wider influence because the whole church needs a renewal and a revival in catechetics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And this is what I'm sensing in the church right now with the whole revival, with the Eucharistic revival going on, mm -hmm. um, with the new directory. We are really posited at a, at a position, at a place to, to be part of a renewal. And renewals work the best when we remain tethered, if you will, to tradition, mm -hmm. what works. Okay. So again, in my book, I'm trying to help us to, as we as we move forward with particular innovation, that we stand on the shoulders of giants before us. And this is what Sophia and Gianna did. Uh, they didn't make it up on their own. They didn't become rogue. Gianna was, was, was tied to Montessori and her insights into the child. Sophia was, was tied to the church and her insights into revelation mm -hmm. and method. And so, um, so uh, I, I want us to be faithful to the work in its, in its depth, in its depth. Right. In order to do that, we have to be willing to be um, continually formed ourselves. I have found that mm. I, I've been involved in the work for about 12 years, 13 years now. Oh. And in order... It is takes time to fully understand the breadth of this work. And so it takes reading, reading the journals, reading our books, listening to the podcast, oh, talking yes. to people who are wiser than us. <clears throat> yeah. But it takes observation, sitting with the child, humbling ourselves like Sean and Gobi did, uh, mm -hmm. Jana and Sophia did, and letting the child guide us um, to that heart of God. But it takes time to be willing to be continually formed in this work um, to fully understand the depth of this work and how it connects to what the church is asking us in catechetics like it's yeah. it takes more than um, one time formation it's it has to be prayer breath Oh, yes, Carrie, yes. And that is the one thing that I um, lift up in the book specifically is the formation of the catechist. So we are always looking for um, what I call chia, chia pet catechist, just mm -hmm. add water and watch them grow. Right, right. And, and the more we perpetuate that, the longer we're going to have problem in catechetics because... <clears throat> Well, God is the, God is the, is the, he does the work in catechesis. There's no doubt about it. it. Only the spirit can, can lead us to say, I believe. But the person of the catechist has an uh, indispensable role in this work. And to the degree that I am formed, my own prayer life, my own understanding of, of what the church is teaching, you know, so, so do I read the catechism? Do I read the church's documents? 
<clears throat> am I trying to keep myself uh, spiritually, intellectually fed? That's what's going to help. Not not that you become the the theologian in the classroom is going to have all the answers. No, but but that you it comes through you, and you know how to pose a question in the right way at the right time, because that's what again a good teacher does. The right question, the right time. And that's what I've seen in the CGS people is they're just, they're so committed. I was just in Oklahoma um, and I had a chance to meet with some catechists there my first time to share the book and talk about the book. And I, I was just so impressed that, that they gave an hour and a half on a Sunday afternoon. Tell me more. It, this is the spirit of the CGS catechists that, that again has always um, delighted me. Mm -hmm. You all, we are so committed. So one of the sisters uh, said to me, um, Sister Mary Michael, this was your big work. This was your blank page. And it brought tears to my eyes because it has been hard. <laughs> um, I'm not a writer, and I hope I've done justice to the catechesis of the Good Shepherd. I've tried to be so faithful. But it has been hard uh, for me personally. And so I offer it to you all and to the church with all the love that I can possibly offer it to you, with all the mind I had <laughs> to offer to you, so that you would be confident that you have an approach that is faithful, and it's just a matter of us being faithful to the work. Well, sister, thank you so much for your gift of your time and your talents in writing this book. Because as it's funny that you keep saying that you're not a writer, because as I was reading it, I was thinking what an amazing writer you are. And um, that I thought felt like you had the gift of writing. So I think that that's kind of funny. But I'm so appreciative that you took so much time and so much effort and research in writing this book, because I truly feel that this book um, can have a ripple effect in our faith and in catechetics. So I really appreciate this work that you have given us. So thank you for joining us on the podcast today and for your gift Privilege. of your book. Thank you, Carrie. And, and thank you for, um, yeah, just having me on today. God bless you. Thank you all for listening to this week's episode of The Good Shepherd and the Child Podcast. I hope you enjoyed listening to Sister Mary Michael. If you would like to get your hands on a copy of this brand new book, I have a link in our show notes for how you can purchase it. This is the type of book that you want to send to your priests and your deacons and your DREs and your bishops. Please feel free to share this episode with anybody that you might think that also might be interested in knowing more about how Catechesis of the Good Shepherd parallels so beautifully with what the church is asking us today in Catechesis, especially in the 2020 Directory for Catechesis. There's also another new book that we have at the CGS USA store. It's called The Gospels. And I know First Communions and Confirmations are all coming up. And this is a perfect book as a gift for those. It is a beautiful little green book that has the four Gospels in a larger text, beautifully scripted, but also with some beautiful embellishment illustrations throughout it. It is simple and beautiful. And I highly recommend it as a gift for the loved ones in your life that are having one of those special moments. We also don't forget we have our form online so that if you have a question that you would like us to answer on the podcast, either from myself that I could answer or one of our guests could answer, we have a form online that you could fill out to ask us any question about catechesis of the Good Shepherd. Maybe you have a problem in the atrium or a question about how to do something, materials to make, formation, anything with Montessori. If you have any questions, we would love to hear from you. We also have the audio version of The Religious Potential of the Child. If you would like to know how to get access to that, check out our show notes. This podcast is sponsored by the United States Association of the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd. We would like to thank all our contributing members because you are making this podcast possible. If you would like to know more about the Catechesis of the Good Shepherd or how to become a member, please go to cgsusa.org. Thank you all for listening this week. We will see you in two weeks. Go and fall more deeply in love with God.